Thank you, Eagles. Thanks for all the picks you gave us. Now we got six in the top 100. Mmm, thank you. We're, we're really gonna enjoy using those to maybe get more picks or actually select people. But legit, I can, I'm can i still in awe that the Philadelphia Eagles freaking moved up. Literally, I mean, they didn't sell the farm. There's a difference between selling the farm and just, you know, trading a few picks. There's going New Orleans, Ditka, and trading every single pick you had for one guy. And then there's, you know, just trading away a few picks. The Eagles were about halfway between each. So, you know, how is this going to work for them? Well, uh, it's very risky because they are putting their all their faith in if that if in that quarterback, whether it would be Goff or Wentz. What are they gonna do if Wentz is trash? They're gonna be beating their heads on the table, or in, they're gonna be banging their heads into a wall, wondering why the heck they made that that uh, trade. You know, it's like, and then you traded away all those picks. I believe it was a first, of course, the eighth pick. I believe it was a third, a fourth, and then the next year, first and second, and the year after that. So, and then we only gave him was a 2017 fourth, and a, the number two pick. So... Uh, I don't know how that's going to go for you guys. <laughs> I wish you guys luck, though. Because it would be uh, a shame to, uh, you know, see more angry Eagles. I mean, there's already not that many Eagles fans on YouTube. And if the Eagles do horrible, there's going to be even less. I mean, I think really the only true Eagles fans that are on YouTube are Nitro Freak, technically Eagle Speed, uh, EDP, yeah, to a point, yeah. Granted, he lives in Bakersfield, so he's a distant fan. Although he does go to games, though. That's the one thing EDP has over everyone. He went to a game. Of course, there was that creepy scene of him and Nitro Freak embracing, like, duh, give me chills. Ugh. I mean, there's a difference between a man hug and just freaking, like, Embrace it like you want to like you love each other. It's like bruh, 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 dude. Just just, just hold on, just, just chill. <laughs> All right, but on a real note, um, yeah, <laughs> hope that all works out for you, Philly, because. For like the five fans that are on YouTube right now, if that doesn't work, there's probably going to be like two or three of them after this. Now, granted, I am like one of the only Browns fans on YouTube. There's like two other ones, I think, but they don't really show their face much. Uh, Boss Dog, I don't know what happened to him. And the Cleveland Brown, who knows what happened to him. He, he had, he's been MIA since the end of the year, end of last season. And then I don't really know about anyone else. But I'm the only one that's on here persist uh, consistently. So uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to pretty much all my followers that actually, you know, subscribed to my channel. You know, shows I have good supporting system. You know, I'll keep making videos as long as people keep subscribing. Of course, you know, if I could have zero subscribers and I'd still make videos. Because <laughs> that's what I do. It's what I love. Of course, you know, if you want to see someone rant about their team who's consistently horrible, come right here. You know, come here. Watch a Browns fan rant about how bad his team is consistently week in and week out. And because you guys are going to get a show if we don't do good in this draft. If we fail this draft, you're going to get a show. Oh, my goodness. You guys should. Mm. I mean, it's not going to be like EDP crazy, but it's going to be crazy. I'm not going to be yelling and screaming. I'm just going to probably talk about how the heck could we fail on a draft. 
Because that seems like what the Browns always do. Fail the draft. Although there was a few times when we actually passed. Like in 2007. There's like a few picks every year that we get. One or two picks every so often that we get. That we just... I can't believe we made that pick. Hence the Joe Thomas pick. Or the Joe Hayden. I guess guys named Joe. Because it seems like whenever we get a guy named Joe, they always work out. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But it's kind of kind of cool, actually. The two Joes I think we have on our team that actually work out. Granted, we do have a Joe L. Petonio. And he's pretty good. So, we'll see where that goes. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a mock draft out. My computer's been acting up crazy. So, i got to get that fixed. And then, uh, yeah. Um... I'll probably have a mock draft out, hopefully, by the end of this week. But maybe by tomorrow, I think. Because uh, I want to make sure there's, no, there's not going to be any more trades. <laughs> so that's the thing I want to do. Get a third trade, get a third mock draft going, you know, on uh, YouTube, and then have another trade happen. If that happens, I'm going to freaking, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done making mock drafts after this third. I mean, it's too much. Too much. So that's enough for right now. I uh, just wanted to say again, thank you, Eagles, for uh, the draft picks. Hope everything <laughs> works out for you guys, because I would hate for another draft to fail. Hope that I hope that I would hate for that to fail, because then people will be comparing that to like the Herschel Walker trade and the Ricky Williams trade that Ditka pulled off. And what gets that one more about that one? Um, what kills me more about that? Is that Mike Ditka told the the fans of New Orleans the Royal gonna win a Super Bowl? I'm like, okay. And what happened? They went three and thirteen. They lost to the expansion Browns that year. Yeah. They lost to the expansion Browns. Literally, like granted, I think what we were like 0 six that year. When they when we faced them, one and two, one and three. I don't know what I don't know when it was, but I know we lost to. I mean, we lost to. We beat the Saints in our first year back <laughs> because Tim Couch threw like a hail mary at the end of the game and he hit it and that probably was awesome. Granted, we haven't been crap since. We haven't been crap at all since like 2007. I still remember that day. I still remember that day. We beat the Niners. I go to bed. Granted, I was younger, so I had, you know, an early bedtime. I didn't really have an early bedtime. I was just really tired. Listen to the Titans-Colts game, praying that the Titans would lose, because if the Colts won, that the Browns would make the playoffs, which I was hoping to God the Colts would win. And sure enough, I woke up and the Titans won, so I was not too happy the next day. I was kind of sad. Lo and behold, look where we are now. <laughs> I mean, another thing. The reason why we sucked the past few years in drafting was because of our front office. When you have a guy who got suspended for four games, I think it was, for texting the sidelines, and then a guy who signed Dwayne Bowe, and then didn't even use them? Hans, Ray Farmer. Yeah, um, that was probably the worst pickup ever. Mike Pettin, worst coach I've seen in a long time. And he fooled us with that 7-9 and nine year two years ago. He had us going. You know, we were thinking, man, you know, we're going to go like 8-8, eight and 9-7. Eight, and seven. What do we do? 3-13. and 13. <laughs> Biggest tease ever. Of course, many, you know, attribute that seven and nine record to uh, <sighs> Brian Hoyer. We were one win away from 500. We were set what seven and four going into the last five games. We led the division for like two weeks, and then I think um, Brian Hoyer got hurt or something, and Manziel came in. And he, tried, and he stunk up the joint. And then all of a sudden, we went downhill. But actually, technically, it all went, started going downhill 
when we lost Alex Mack last year. I mean, two years ago. We don't lose Alex Mack, I don't think. I think we make the playoffs because that team was pretty good. I mean, we could do bootlegs. You know, our running game was looking good. And then after when he went down, it all went downhill. So, <laughs> well, he's gone now, so we don't have to worry about that. But now we have the thing of who the heck are we going to put on our offensive line? Most likely, Cameron Irving will be off center. He's actually better at center than he is at tackle or guard. I've watched tape. He's really good at, at center. Granted, uh, not very good, uh, um, you know, field goal blocking. Hence, we had, like, what, five field goals blocked last year, including one we turned for a touchdown, which still haunts me. Ugh. Oh, man. Well... That's going to do it for me to for right now. Um, probably the next time you'll see a video is probably tomorrow night when I do a mock draft. So, um, yeah. I'm crazy dog. And I'm always going to be a Browns fan. Even if I'm the last one on YouTube. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm out.